Back on the show is Zach Otto, who's got a fight coming up here against Jingling Lee at UFC Fight Night 122 on November 25th. Zach, how's it going? Going great. How are you doing, James? I'm doing well. It's good to talk to you again. Are you just coming from practice or just going to practice? Uh, I had a session earlier today. I just kind of run some errands uh, in the car right now, and then I'm heading back to the gym for practice tonight. So Excellent. Well, uh, thank you for making me part of your errands today. I appreciate it. And, uh, man, you have been racking up the frequent flyer miles your last couple fights, uh, <laughs> Brazil, Australia, and now you're going to China. Um, did you want this? Do you like traveling, or is this just the way the, the card sort of fell? It's just kind of the way it's been happening. Um, it's not like I've been asking for it. But uh, I don't mind it. It's all good. Um, getting a chance to get out and kind of – make some new fans around the world and uh you know it's a global sport so trying to just get my name out there and hopefully getting some wins over these guys will continue to do that for me and you're coming off the split decision in your last fight to Kichi Kinumoto at uh, UFC Fight Night 110 in June uh, were you surprised it was a split decision in that one yeah I was really surprised I thought um the first two rounds were clearly mine um I took the fight on about three weeks notice and he came out in pretty good shape uh, the start of the third round, I was going to kind of uh, recover a little bit, uh, take it easy. It was kind of a, a hectic end to round two. So I was going to kind of coast a little bit. He caught my kick right away and took me down. And um, I didn't want to expend too much energy trying to get back up right away and have him take my back. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to kind of recover here, not take any damage, and then I'm going to work my way back up. And he just did a really good job staying on top and stuff. But um, I thought he... He took that third round, but I thought it was a clear 29-28 um, round one and two was totally mine. So, yeah, um, I was, yeah, I, I don't know where these split decisions are coming from. Even against Berkman, um, there's like, you know, 20 different media outlets that judge the fights on their own. And every single one of them had me winning against Berkman and had, had me winning my last fight. So... Um, yeah, I don't know what these judges uh, you know, sometimes, the best man. I it's, can it's, do is just start finishing these guys, and then I won't have to worry about that. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. Um, and, and that fight was back in June, and I know it was a short-notice fight, but uh, here we are in September. Uh, did you want that much time off, or did you want to get in the cage sooner? Uh, I thought November was would be about a good time for me to get back in, and, and it looks like I'm getting into November. So that all kind of worked out as far as timing. Um, I like that kind of uh, – distance between my two fights it was enough to kind of you know heal up and then work on some new things have fun training and then get back to a hard training camp and have a full training camp this time yeah and i actually said we're in september it's november um i'm losing my mind i just my wife and i recently had a kid so the months are just sort of blending together so that's why i said september so my apologies for that it's clearly november it's actually november 6th so i don't know where that came from but uh let's talk about this fight um you're taking on uh, jingling lee as i mentioned off the top uh how do you feel like you match up against him uh really well um he's definitely an experienced well-rounded fighter um you know, he brings a pretty uh, pretty good pace to the fight. He's pretty technical on the feet. He's got solid grappling, brown belt, and jiu-jitsu. Decent wrestling. He's just really good everywhere, you know. Um, but I think I'm just a little bit better everywhere. So yeah, no, I, I, uh, I feel confident about the matchup. And uh, as far as training camp, uh, is it just business as usual, you know, training with the same guys uh, and, you know, that are, uh, you know, sort of helping you get ready for most of your fights? Um, I've had a couple – uh, new training partners. Um, I've added just a little bit to my r- normal strength and conditioning, uh, doing some uh, speed of sport, Nick Curson style training with Nick Villegas, um, which has really helped lean me out and give me uh, a lot more just elastic power. And and uh, I, I feel really confident going into the fight. I feel like I'm in great shape. Um, I, I feel healthy. You know, normally I, I found about the fight quite a bit ago and so i've had some time to prepare for the fight and uh as far as like bumps and bruises and all that kind of stuff um nothing serious and i'm just ready to go here uh you mentioned uh, bringing some new training partners in anyone uh, we can mention or, or is that like top secret are you trying to keep like you know the game plan under wraps yeah no, i mean it's nobody that nobody's really heard of yet but they're regional killers that are coming up um uh, along with my normal team, which everybody on my team has just been racking up wins on the regional level um, and getting closer and closer to that call up. Uh, Tim Hiley is a undefeated 185 pounder that trains at my gym, 
and you know he really helps give me that look that I need for this guy, um, as well as uh, Charlie Radke, who um, is a really great jujitsu guy, um, and he's also tearing up the regional scene too at at 155. So I got some guys right around my weight class that are really give me a good look and help me get ready for this fight like hearing the plugs from the up-and-comers that's great um how's the weight cut going uh, you know we're a couple weeks up from this fight everything on point yeah best it's ever been um you know when i took my my last fight i had like three weeks to lose 35 pounds so uh it was pretty you know it's hard when you're not just trying to make that weight but you're also trying to get ready for a fight you're trying to get your muscle memory right you're trying to get your conditioning up to par and everything and you're going into a lot of those workouts on like an empty tank, you know, so it feels good this time having uh, the full fight camp. I can work my way down that new, that uh, strength and conditioning that I've kind of added to a supplement. My, my training has really helped lean me out, like I said, and uh, just really slowly taking it off over the weeks. My weights is be- the, as best as it's ever been for making 170. Love hearing that, man. Uh, how do you sort of see this fight ending on November 25th? I see, I see a lot of different ways, you know, I, I'm always visualizing and, and playing out the fight. Um, I could see it being, uh, an early stoppage or I could see it, um, being a, a three round, you know, grind out fest. So I, I, I'm really not sure, but I'm preparing for the worst and, uh, I'm, I'm ready to go in there and give everything I need to for 15 minutes to get that W. What about after this fight? I know you're not looking past your opponent, but do you have an idea of when you want to get back in the cage, assuming all goes well and you're healthy and everything's good to go? Uh, this is my last fight on my con- on my current contract, so I'm just looking to get this win so I can go in and re-sign and uh, keep moving myself up the ladder. You know, I, I'm i about to be 31. I still got plenty of time left competing and uh, there's still some things that I want to work on and stuff like that before like I'm ready for any top 10 guy. But um, I definitely want to keep climbing the ladder, just keep going up. You know, um, I'm looking just a little bit ahead of me in, in the rankings and, you know, going after that next that next tier fighter and keep moving myself up, you know, 10 spots at a time. Um, so, yeah, somebody that's uh, definitely ranked ahead of me. And I've kind of been wanting to fight somebody, another longtime vet, like somebody that's been around the UFC a little while. Uh, maybe, you know, 10 plus fights in the division um, and see how I kind of match up with them. Nice. And, and do you have an idea of wh- where you'd want to fight? I mean, the UFC just released their schedule on uh, Saturday, uh, this past Saturday, uh, talking about the first quarter. There's a couple interesting uh, spots. I know like Austin, Texas is one of them. They're doing another show in London. Do you have a preference? Would you like to fight on U.S. soil uh, for your next one? Because, uh, again, you've been doing a lot of traveling. Uh, you know, I, I like traveling. I definitely will want to someday work my way over into – Europe, you know, on like the London card or something, that would be cool one day. But for my next one after this, just because I've been way out of town for three times in a row here, um, something on the U.S. soil would definitely be um, something that I'm looking for. And you mentioned this being the last fight on your contract. Does that sort of add more pressure to this fight? Because you obviously want to have a really good showing if you want to re-up with them or if you want to test free agency. There's always pressure in this game. I mean... Right. I mean, we uh, it's not like a football schedule where you can face somebody really tough one week and then the next week you can, you know, kind of have like a, an easier team on the schedule. Our next fight is always the, the toughest, the most, the most pressure yeah, okay. of, your, of your career, you know, so it's nothing new. You know, it's my my 27th cage fight altogether. And uh, each one is just as you get more and more comfortable going through the process and getting more experience the the stakes get higher you know so it all just kind of feels the same fair enough uh, and the plan is to re-sign with the ufc or, or are you you know just going to wait and see what happens after this fight yeah ideally that's where you know the best fighters are and that's where i want to compete at so uh yeah looking to get re-signed by the ufc excellent well uh, this fight is coming up here on uh, november 25th it's ufc fight night 122 uh, zach i always appreciate you taking the time uh, especially uh, you know in between practice and everything uh, just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media and if you got any sponsors or shout outs the floor is yours sir sure i have an athlete page on facebook zach the barbarian auto uh please like the page um also you can find me on twitter at the barbarian mma and then i'm also on instagram under my name zach auto um, you know, I have sponsors that really help me out, get me ready for these fights. 
uh, Combat Corner, who I'm actually going to make a stop at right now. Um, you know, providing a lot of gear and all the best uh, equipment and stuff that I need, uh, getting ready for these fights. And then also my strength and conditioning coach on, uh, at Midwest Strength and uh, Ink Gun Clothing.